Hey everyone, Chelsea here from So Simple Home. Today we're going to put together a project that has been really popular on our site and in our Etsy shop um, and one that a lot of people are looking at. We have a short video on it, but today I wanna actually walk you through step-by-step -step how to make this pattern. So this is the Mom and Me apron or our kids pattern, our kids apron pattern. Um, you can buy it in our Etsy shop or you can go check it out on our blog. Um, when you print it out, it's three pages. This is the children's side. So you can get um, <coughs> the kids size, <laughs> excuse me, the kids size on our um, website or you can head over to our Etsy shop and get the Mom and Me, which includes um, several kids size as well as the adult size. Today we're just gonna do the kids size and I'm just gonna cut the edges off of my PDF pattern here. I cut the right side and the bottom. Those are just the ones that I always do. They seem to work really well for me. And then for our patterns, you just match um, the little triangles until they become diamonds. And that matches the size that you need. And today I'm just going to do um, the children's size. There's we this pattern comes with a 18. It, it comes with 18 month um, for children all the way up to size eight. So I'm going to do the size five, six, seven, eight. And because it's an apron, um, it's more of a one size fits all type of pattern. So there's several small sizes, and then. We have a preteen, teen, and then an adult size as well. So uh, it's really nice for if you need uh, several sizes, if you want to um, create four different age kits. So I'm just cu cutting out the five, six, seven, eight size. And like I said, you could head over to our Etsy shop for this particular pattern that includes all of the sizes from 18 months all the way to adults. All right, so here is what the apron pattern looks like. Now the other thing that you want to look at is on the cutting chart, or on the apron is included the cutting chart. So it includes the apron ties, the necktie, and then an optional pocket if you want to do a pocket. I'm not going to do the pocket today, but you can, and it's just kind of in the center. It's the center pocket. So I'm doing the 5, 6, 7, 8 size, and so these are the measurements that I'm going to need. So the first thing I'm going to do is cut out my apron. And I have this fun kind of ABC material. And let's move, we'll move our sewing machine out of the way here. We'll come back and put it back up so you can kind of see. And then I'm just using, these are my pattern weights and I'll try and put a link in the description for pattern weights, but it makes it easier than pinning. And I'm just going to cut this pattern out and you can see I'm cutting it out on the fold and that will give me the full size pattern. Now you can make this a reversible pattern. So if you wanted to cut two of these, you could definitely make a reversible apron. So you have two designs, or when it gets dirty, you turn it around and it still looks clean. But that is totally up to you. And maybe in the future, if there's enough interest, give me a comment below and maybe we can make a future video on how to make it reversible. So there's my pattern cut out. Now we're going to cut out our ties. <laughs> so what I'm going to do is I'm going to fold my material as much straight on as I can. Okay, then I'll put it on my cutting board and I'll use my rotary cutting, not my cutting board, my self healing mat. I'm going to cut this first section, make sure it's nice and, and uh, straight. Okay, and then for my apron ties, they need to be two and a half inches thick or wide. So I'm going to come here to two and a half inches and cut through. 
and then it's probably better if I have it the right direction two and a half inches this way and those are my ties that go around the middle and then I need one for my neck and that one is also for this particular size two and a half inches so now I have my three apron ties and all I have to do is open them up and use my measuring tape to get the exact size that I need. So I need 28 inches. So right here, 28 inches for two of them. Those are the apron ties that go around the middle. So again, these two are the same size, 28 inches. You can use your ruler for that so you're nice and accurate. And then the one that goes around the neck is 21 inches. So this one's a little bit shorter. 21 inches right there on that mark. Okay, so now I have my apron ties, my neck ties, and my apron, and we can start sewing. All right, so for our apron pattern, I have my apron piece, and then I have my neck ties, and then I have my two apron ties that go on the side. So I'm going to go ahead and start with my ties. So the first thing I do for my ties is I'm gonna have it long ways, and I'm gonna fold it in half, if you will, hot dog style. At least that's how I learned it in elementary. And I'm gonna sew all the way down the long side of my ties. So I'll put it in my machine, I'll go forward and back stitch, and I'm just sewing at a quarter of an inch, which is right along the presser foot, all the way down. Now if you followed me for a while, you know my machine has changed. I usually have my old school Bernina, She stopped working around Christmas time and I need to just get her into the shop. So I'm sewing on my very first sewing machine that my parents bought me when I was in high school. And it's just a little singer. It doesn't do anything real fancy. But it gets the job done. You can see here that I'm just using a chain stitch. So here's my necktie and then this is my sides. And a chain stitch just means I don't pick up my presser foot. I just continue stitching onto the next piece. I like a good chain stitch because I don't use as much thread. And so it allows me to keep pieces together. And I'm not wasting thread because every time you know you cut your thread, you're wasting a little bit more. All right, so I've got my two side ties and then this one here is my neck tie. Now if you have a bodkin, this is a great time to use your bodkin. I do not. I just use a safety pin and I simply am lacing the safety pin through the end of my tie and then looping it back through the bottom. And then I'll pull so that I'm putting the material to the inside of the tie. And so that's how I'm turning it right side out. So 
So this is a method you'll use almost always when you're doing any kind of ties. Apron ties, ties on a bag or a tote, um, ties on a dress. So that's just kind of an easy method to turn things, especially if you don't want to buy specialized equipment or tools. Just use a safety pin. Works just as good. Okay, so there's one tie. I'm going to go ahead and do these other ties. Now for this particular pattern, if you, I had said earlier, if you wanted to make it reversible, you could. Um, the benefits of making it reversible one is it's reversible, right? So if you wanted your apron to be different, so let's say on one side it's just an everyday apron, right, that matches your kitchen or whatever, and the other side maybe it has your favorite sports team's logo or something on it, and you can personalize it a little bit more. Um, but you don't always have to have your favorite team on that on the apron, right? So that's kind of a fun thing. Um, I made my mom aprons several years ago, and I made a few of them reversible, and that's fun because they're seasonal, so she can have different ones for uh, different holidays or different seasons, um, but then I'm not having to make more than one apron. So the benefit is for one apron, I have two different designs, right? So if you don't want to sew 100 aprons, you know, you could sew 50 instead. Does that make sense? Hey, the other nice thing about doing the reversible is you don't have to finish the edges well, all the edges of these ties. So the necktie and the two side ties would be encased inside the reversible apron. Um, and so then you wouldn't have to finish those edges. So that's something some people like taking that extra step out of it. So there's not as many seam finishes or that you have to do. Okay, so there are my three ties. So now we're going to press them. So I've just got my cute little Cricut Easy Press here, my Easy Press Mini. So there's a couple ways you can press them. You can press it so that the seam is in the middle, um, and then when you're seeing your ties, you know, on the front of your apron, you're not seeing any seams. Or you can press them so that the seam is right on the edge like this. And that is totally up to you how you decide to do it. Um, I've done it both ways for various different aprons that I've done. Um, both ways are fine. But it's kind of a choice for you. Some people just really like the seam kind of on the back side. They, they don't want to see it. And then some people don't mind it right on the edge. Um, I don't know that one is better than the other, like, I think for wear and tear, they're pretty much the same. You're not going to have much of a difference. Um, one's not going to last longer than the other, you know, because they're, they're both being used for the same thing. Now another thing, um, people do ask, what about interfacing? Should I be putting interfacing on my ties? Um, is that is that would that make them last longer or make them better I say no um, interfacing makes your material have more stick or makes it stiffer right it has more texture it keeps its form better um, with ties they don't need to keep their form right you want them to, to easily tie and if you're adding interfacing to them it'll make them thicker um, and then it'll make them harder to tie so I do not suggest and I do not put in the pattern or the instructions that you cut in any type of interfacing um, for this particular apron project. So, um, but that's just me, you know. When you start sewing and you start making your own rules, that's totally up to you. All right, so there are my ties. They're all ready to go. These are, let's make sure I get the right ones. I got my two side ties, my apron ties, and then this is my neck tie. It's a little bit smaller. All right, so the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna press our apron. Um, and this is important for the fact that we are going to get rid of all our seam, our raw edges. 
right? We don't want raw edges on our apron because as we're wearing it, it'll rub against things. That's not what we want. So I'm gonna start by doing the seam finish, if you will, for the curves of the apron. So this is the right side, this is the wrong side. I'm gonna press about a quarter of an inch all the way along that curve, okay? And then I'm going to go and do it again. And this time it's gonna be just a little bit wider at about a half an inch. And you could get your little ruler out and be super accurate with that and that is just fine. Okay, that's about, that's about right. Okay, and I like it to lay as flat as I can get it because I'm gonna sew this. When I sew it, it's a lot easier if it's flat. Okay, and then I'm just gonna go ahead, ooh, that's kinda hot, and put a pin on this side and come up here and put a pin up here, just so it'll kind of stay flat. Okay, now I'm gonna do the other side, the other curve. So again, I'm doing about a quarter of an inch And then I'm gonna fold it down. <coughs> Excuse me. And do about a half inch around that curve. And the curve is probably the hardest, the hardest part to press <laughs> because it's a curve. Then again, I'm gonna take a pin, bend this side down a little pin this side down a little, just so it kind of stays in place. And if you don't have pins and you use clips, that works too. Okay, so those are my two curved edges. Now I'm gonna do um, my top edge. And this is going to encase these two edges. So I'm gonna come down a quarter of an inch. That might be just a little more than a quarter, but it's all right. I think part of that's just my cutting. And do it again here. Now, if you're lazy and you don't want to press things, I say get over it. Pressing makes sewing so much faster, honestly. So I've pinned those. So now when I actually sew and I'm sewing along this, I can just come right up here and sew along this edge and then come into the curve because everything's already pressed and in place. Just makes it easier. If you try and do it as you're, as you're sewing, if you try and fold things as you're sewing, it gets really messy and that's never fun. All right, now I'm gonna do my side here. One side at a quarter of an inch. And then come up to a half inch. And again, that's kind of encasing those raw edges at each of the corners. And that's what I want. I don't want them out. I don't want them rubbing on anything because that's what starts unraveling your projects. And I'll do the opposite side here. Quarter of an inch, and then a half inch. And again, you can get your ruler out and be super accurate on this. And that's awesome. Okay, last but not least, we're doing the bottom. The bottom edge here. Press out some of these creases in here. We'll get those really good later too. So quarter of an inch. The other thing to watch for when you are picking material for this pattern is if it is directional fabric. Um, so if it is, um, if it has a specific direction. So this fabric is directional and I'll show that here in a second, but that just means 
is are the pictures is the design going one direction if it is you want to make sure that the design is going the right direction of the apron so let me show you that here get this out of the way so everything here is pinned pressed and pinned so here's our material you can see all my cute little children on here they're all so cute um, but they're all facing the same direction. Their heads are on top and their legs are on bottom. There's not a kid going sideways or a kid that's upside down or even the letters. None of the letters are upside down. That's what we call directional fabric. So if I wasn't paying attention, I would have cut these kids and my apron upside down. And that would not have been good, right? <laughs> we don't want that. So that's something to pay attention to with the fabric you purchase. Okay, so I have all my pins in. We're gonna go ahead and sew. And I am actually going to start in this corner here, go up and around, all the way down, around the bottom, and then back to this corner. Okay, easy as that. And I'm gonna stitch it right on that edge. So I'm gonna forward and back stitch, and then I'm stitching right along my folded edge, all the way around. Just go to the top, put my needle down, turn, keep going across, all the way to the other side, put my needle down, turn, keep following along. But do you see how much easier it is because I pressed this? It just makes things so much faster. Don't get me wrong, I don't always press everything. But it does make a difference. Okay, cross the bottom here. And then back up this side. I'm gonna back up just a little. I went a little too far. So now I'm just going to take my little iron here and I'm going to press those that seam in, pressing those threads so they kind of mesh with my material a little bit, helps set them in and it helps straighten those seams because sometimes when you're sewing, sometimes the seams get a little wonky where we stretch them as we go. So pressing is your friend, helps things look nice. Okay. Next step is we're going to put our straps on. So to do that, so we have our, our ties, excuse me, not our straps, our ties. So we want to finish the edge of our ties. So there's a couple ways you can do this. You can turn these right side in. So push the edges inside. Sometimes it works better than other times. <laughs> and then you can stitch across. So I just turned the, the raw edge inside. Then I just put it in my machine here. And stitch across. Cut those threads all the way around here. And then that edge is, is clean. Okay. The other thing you could do is you can turn the edge down. So I turned it down and then I turn it down again. So I'm effectively hiding that raw edge inside the tie. 
and just stitch across that. Very similar to what we did on the edge of the apron here, right? We just turned it a quarter of an inch and then another quarter of an inch. So either of those methods work for, for finishing off the outside edge of the tie. Now for the inside edge of the tie, I put my tie to the, to the middle here, to the seam here, and then I fold it over like this, which kind of is strange looking, I know. But what we're going to do is we're going to sew a box around this. And so we're going to stitch here, down, here, up. And so it's effectively going to enclose that raw edge on the inside of the tie. So let me show you that again on this side. So I put my raw edge to the seam and then I fold this over, kind of encases that edge and then I pin it. Okay. So I'm just going to put it in my machine and I'm going to sew a box stitch, which means I'm going to go down. So I just put a stitch diagonal down the middle. And so now it's nice and tight. I'm going to do the same thing to the other tie on this side, just doing a box stitch. So I'm going to start on one end. Go up, go across to the other end, put my needle down, turn, go down to the other side, cross the bottom, back stitch, and then I will put one diagonal stitch in. You can put two, I'm just doing one. gives it a little bit more strength, especially for a tie like this that you're going to be tying a lot. That's just a little bit more strength. So there's my two ties, two apron ties. Now I have the tie that goes on my neck. So I am actually going to take these apron ties, put them in the middle, and I'm going to pin them just so they stay out of my way because they are known to get in the way. All right, so for my necktie, I'm gonna do the same thing, but the thing you wanna watch out for is you wanna make it, you wanna make the tie a loop like this. You don't wanna make it necessarily like this. Does that make sense? So it'll hold on your neck. This one, it's kinda has like a fold in it almost. So you want it to, the ties are straight and then they just come together like this. So they're, they're on the same side or on the same path. I don't know. I can't, I don't know. I'm not explaining that very well, but so they'll be like this. It just is a lot more comfortable around the neck, I guess is what I'm trying to say. So I do have raw edges on both sides of this. So again, I'm just going to tuck that raw edge in and pin it because I'll do a box, a box stitch around the neck as well. So I'm just tucking that raw edge in and um, sewing it. And I sew my neck straps right to the edge. And then sometimes it's hard with children because children's bodies proportions are way off, right? Their heads are usually way bigger than the rest of their body. And so to get it around the head, this strap has to be a certain width, but then sometimes it falls really low on the chest. And so what sometimes you'll end up having to do is like put a knot in this, or you might have to pin it or something so that it um, isn't so low on their chest. And that's totally normal. And I'll show you actually another method that I got from one of my roommates in college that works as well to help the apron be high enough even though it has to get over the head. Okay, so we're just gonna sew our box stitches on these two neck straps, or on these two sides of one neck strap. And then we can 
show you how you might tie this apron. And like I said, there's lots of different methods you can use, but um, this one method that I got from one of my roommates in college is actually one that I use with my kids often because their heads are just way too big and their ties and people are like the ties are so big but then I'm like yeah you make them smaller but then they don't fit over their head so it's kind of a double-edged sword so I will show you a good method and this method actually works for adults too she used to tie her apron this way and it was always kind of fascinating to me and on some of my aprons I use the same method Perfect. So let's just cut all these loose threads here. Get them out of the way. Just a few of them. This apron, I actually really like this yellow fabric that we use for the ties. It kind of makes things pop a little. All right. And there it is. How easy is that? So it's a, such a simple project. So I told project. you I'd show you a method of tying this apron on if you feel like the neck strap is just too big for your toddler. Um, because again, their heads are big, but their bodies are not as long. So Batman's gonna be our helper today. So what we do is we put the apron on Batman and we notice, oh, it's a little long, right? This neck, it should be up here. So, we turn them around, and here's our neck strap, and then here's our apron straps over here. So what we do is we take these two apron straps, and we put them up through the neck strap, like this, and then we come around, and we tie them in the front. And you don't have to do this all really tight, just need it enough so the apron, right, is where it's supposed to be, so they can still walk. Now, Batman's not a great example because most toddlers are bigger than that, but but you can kind of see how that that helps get the apron around him, pulls that neck strap down, but it's still actually very comfortable to wear it this way. So if you're feeling like this neck strap's too big, but I have to make it big enough to get over their head, this is a method of tying it that will help that. Now the other thing that you can do, obviously, depending on the apron, you can make the strap smaller, or you can just tie you know, a knot in the top with how big their head is, making sure that the, it will be able to fit over their head afterwards. Okay, so then the challenge is can you get it over their head? And hopefully you can. So that sometimes is just kind of what you have to look at. And as they get older and their body proportions work out better, those older sizes you're not gonna have that problem with. Um, it's just these really young sizes that people are like, this apron, is, the neck is way weird for my toddler. And I'm like, I get that. But if we shorten this neck strap, it won't fit over their heads. Their heads are too big. So it has to be a certain size to get over their head. Anyway, so there is the kids apron pattern. Like I said, there's a link in the description if you want to get the kids size. If you want to get the uh, children through adult sizes, um, those are available in our Etsy shop. There's a link below for that as well. Um, and then make sure in the comments to let me know if you're interested in seeing a reversible um, tutorial for this pattern so that you know, you'd have a reverse apron. If you're interested in that, then I'm happy to do that as well. Um, have a great day and we'll see you next time.